Okay, so we're going to do a really fascinating muscle, which is the iliopsoas. The iliopsoas is deep, so especially the psoas portion is really, really deep. And uh, the important landmarks are the iliac crest. So I feel along here, and I'm going to draw it. Here's the iliac crest, which comes down there. Then the top part, this part of the iliac crest is called the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. So that's just here. From this, the inguinal ligament runs across like that and runs down onto the pubic bone here. Okay, so the last structure is on the inside of the leg and that is the lesser trochanter of the femur, which is in here. You can't really feel it. The iliopsoas has two components. The first component is the iliacus. So here's the iliac crest, and the iliacus is tucked inside the iliac crest. So to get to it, you have to go through the abdomen push through the abdominal wall and go inside the, the iliac crest. It's a huge muscle which runs, if I draw, it fills the whole of this, of the inside of the iliac crest and it runs underneath and comes through and joins into the iliopsoas tendon. So that's the first, the iliacus muscle. The psoas muscle is, starts at T12. So if you feel just the top of the rib, and my last bit of drawing, this is about T12 here. And so it starts here and it runs front of all the lumbar spines from T12, L1, 2, 3, 4, 5 running all the way along like this, like that, coming down, and it's a large muscle. Now, it turns out there's a, there's a um, greater psoas and a lesser psoas muscle, but the lesser psoas muscle is really of no significance. The greater psoas attaches all the way down. It joins with the iliacus to form a big, fat tendon which runs down and joins into the lesser trochanter of the, of the femur. And together, these muscles, when they contract, will flex your hip. So they are the main flexors of the hip. So iliacus is, because of its position, attached to the, 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 the fixed il iliac bone. Um, it has just purely the function as it contracts it will pull the leg up but the psoas is the fascinating muscle because it is attached to the front of the spine running down and attaching into the in, into the femur so if the psoas contracts it will have a compressive effect on the front of the whole lumbar spine so it's, the, it's part of the muscle of flexion forward. Your abdominal wall helps, but the psoas does that. And if your leg is straight, in other words, the, the, your leg is, is in, the, in a direct straight line, it actually acts as guy ropes for the lumbar spine helping to keep the lumbar spine in a little bit of lordosis, which is exactly what you want. So it's actually a stabilizer of the lumbar spine. A flexor if your leg is forward and a stabilizer if you're standing up straight. And it turns out to be an incredibly important, because it's a big strong muscle running down on each side of, of your, of your uh, lumbar spine in the front. Okay. Together with the uh, quadratus lumborum, which we've discussed earlier, it is, these are the two major postural stabilizers of the, of the uh, 
lumbar spine. They're very, very deep and incredibly important muscles. Okay, so um, because it has so many functions and because the leg is movable and the spine is movable, the psoas does cause problems. But because of its hidden position, it is often missed. The, the, there are three trigger points in the iliopsoas. The first trigger point, if we just roll, roll very slightly over, is next to the belly button, higher up in the abdomen. And remember that to get there you have to get deep because this is the deepest, this is the deep, very, very deep muscle. The second trigger point is in the iliacus, which is, so I'm putting it here, but you need to understand to get to it you've got to get to the inside of the iliac crest. And the third trigger point is down on the thigh where the iliopsoas tendon comes into the lesser trochanter of the, of the femur. So these three triggers, now they actually cause pain in completely different positions, which there you are, adds to the complexity. This trigger, remembering that the psoas is part of the back muscles, is felt in the back. So if you could just roll over slightly, thanks Ben, just, just roll to your side. This trigger is felt along there from L1 down to L5 as a band along here, which is really surprising. So somebody who has pain in this distribution and has very little to find here Look in the front. Thank you. Okay. The, how's that? Is, the balance, is that okay? Yep. Okay. Um, this trigger and this trigger both cause pain to run from the lower abdomen down into the front and the inside of the thigh. So this is the pain distribution of the two lower triggers. So to treat the iliopsoas is tricky because it's a deep, deep muscle. If you have got someone who's very large, very muscular or someone who's really fat, it's just about, I found, practically uh, difficult to impossible to get to these muscles. But in someone who's slim it's actually relatively easy. Just have to understand the anatomy. So let's start with the psoas. So for someone uh, uh, with, of this size it's moderately difficult. You need, you need a real skinny person. But you have a muscle, big strap muscle here, the rectus abdominis two strap muscles. This trigger actually underlies that muscle but to go through it is very very difficult. So you feel to the edge of it and there's a, a, a little um, sort of opening to get down and then if, if you, can you bend your leg up very slightly? So if he bends his leg up slightly that relaxes the abdomen and then you press down deep. Take your time because there's a lot of structures to get through and some of the tenderness may well come from the bowel. So if you press down and, and it's a sharp, uh, it's just, oh, oh, that's sore, just reduce your pressure, sit there for a little bit and do a gentle massage and the massage is going up like this or down and it, what you may do is just move a little bit of wind that's sitting in a loop in the bowel. Take your time, gently get deeper and deeper and deeper and I'm actually deep enough now that I can come onto the uh, psoas muscle. And if this was sore he would 
you know, and the cool thing is I can see his face very easily. If this was sore, he would um, say, you know, this would be really tender. As I pressed on it, he may feel pain locally, but he may actually feel pain going through to his back. So once I'm deep down there, deeper, 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 again, pr using both hands so that there's not a lot of pressure. I'm not working myself too hard. Once I cause pain, I reduce the pressure and then follow that ischemic principle of gradually increasing pressure down, down, down until the pain melts away keeping below the pain threshold. To treat iliacus, I feel for the iliac crest and again he needs to be relaxed. Sometimes it's easier if the leg is up, sometimes not. Just do what you can to take the pressure off and I've got my hand this way around and I'm hooking my hand in behind the iliac crest. And as I hook my hand in behind, I'm pressing down and back like that. And this muscle, when it's, when it's tender, is exquisitely, excruciatingly tender. So you spend time, you work your way in, and then finally when you're on it, there, I'm on it now, you can feel the muscle deep behind the iliac crest. And again, you follow ischemic principles. The last is in the groin. And this is again a fairly common trigger that people will, uh, as they, they'll complain of pain in this area, and when you press down on the inside, you find... So the way that you find this point is if you feel the edge of the... Um, pubic bone and the anterior superior iliac spine here, the trigger point is about halfway and maybe two centimeters down the leg like this. And then you press down. Now you're very close to the femoral nerve, the femoral artery and the vein. So as you press down, you're searching and you move, you run your finger back and forward because the fibers are in this direction. When you find the tender point, you just re again apply those ischemic principles, gradually increasing pressure, increasing, increasing until the pain is gone. So search for all three triggers if you if the person has pain that corresponds to the iliopsoas muscle.